Good morning. Uh, just uh, walking into the room. Uh, it's Tai Chi weapon today, this morning. We're at a half an hour. Usually we do the broadsword. Um, we're going to do the broadsword, but I wanted to introduce a little, uh, some basic fundamentals with the straight sword. So um, what is the straight sword in contrast to the broadsword? For, th for those of you who don't know the difference, it looks like this. Okay. This is a saber. This is a gim or a straight sword. This has two edges and it has a tip and it has uh, the shape of the sword is straight and it has this uh, you know, handle that looks like this. Okay. It has the hilt that's actually designed um, to be held like this and the sword is actually held in the back of the arm in contrast to when we hold the broad sword, it's out here. This is held here. And it's maneuvered in a similar way, but there's the slices, which we do. And then we have a lot, of, a lot more dexterity with this sword. So some of the, the things that we have to understand is that this sword is done with the fingertips like this. The broad sword is done with a hand like this. It's called a willow palm. This is called a sword finger. Okay, so that's one of the differences. But those are stylistic things, and actually it's kind of a characteristic of how you would um, do the weapon. So when you're holding it like this, some people hold it with a single finger. Some people, the traditionalists, hold it typically with two fingers. So you have the sword finger right from the get-go, holding it like this. But some people to do it like this, and a lot of the modern practitioners hold the sword with one single finger. And the single finger is to create, now if you, if you put your finger here and press on it, it keeps it tucked against your forearm. So when you move, it really is be part of your body and an extension of your body. Now, when we thrust or thrust, it's the same as we poke. Okay, We poke down, we poke level, we have horizontal movements, we have angular movements, we have circular movements, we have circular movements, okay, you have over the head positions, you have slicing, oblique movements like this, you have downward postures, you have thrusting, okay, so we have a lot of the same positions, diagonal flying, where the hand comes up like this. You have movements like this. So, you know, there are so many variations. This sword is very difficult to learn, mainly because there isn't a lot of repetition. It's not like uh, the broadsword. You have sections of the form that kind of replicate. This form, you start it off and it just cycles through, and it's like it, it, it doesn't end. It's just constantly bringing in different movements and it's really challenging to memorize it because you don't get the, you know, the, the movements that are so uh, similar that you haven't actually, uh, uh, you have, that you actually dial in but then when you're going through the form with all these new movements, you just have to memorize it from beginning to end so it's really tough to uh, recall. I mean we have movements that are, that are like this we have movements like this, we have movements like this, we have movements like this, we have movements like this. There, there's so many different variations of the, the what you can do with this sword that it's pretty challenging, and, but the, the great thing is that it teaches you so many different positions of the body form. So the form actually when you start off it goes like this and then when we turn we end up slicing out and we, here's a position we end up with the leg like this, and we, we're down here, and we poke. Then we go over the top, we undercut, and then we have movements that come up, and you poke down. You have movements that come like this. And you can see that once the sword is maneuvered, there's a lot of coordination that's involved. Okay, So when we thrust down, you can see that there's lift, press, like this, it comes across, 
and you thrust, it goes over the head, and then you thrust like this. So there's movements with the stances and the body form that really is quite unique compared to the other forms. There's these cross steps, and the hand goes up and down and lift and poke. You know, all of these are positions. So you notice when I start the form that actually there's not a whole lot of different movements. That, well, there is a lot of them, sorry. There is a lot of, so all of these things, can you can see that the difference is very hard to follow. It just continues. You see what happens? And then we go up to here, and you have this position. So that gives you a sample of how a complex sword or a form can lead you into numerous directions. And look at the diversity of movement that's in something like this form. This is uh, very challenging. It's probably one, one of the weapons they call a, the king of weapons. So the sword and the spear are the two uh, weapons that they feel are the most advanced. So anyways, let's move back to the broadsword. So what we saw there, in contrast to what this is, that's a lot more very uh, like, a, like fencing, where they're twirling and using the parry and direct, redirecting a force. You're not chopping with the edge like you're using this in the same way. It's much more finesse when you're doing that. A lot more wrists, a lot more body action. I, I ran through that kind of quick. We don't actually do Tai Chi sword that fast, but the thing is I wanted to uh, not lose too much time because we're going to do the Tai Chi broadsword. The Tai Chi broadsword, we start off, right, and we're in the shoulder width stance, and we begin the preparation. And this in itself is actually uh, very nice to do. It's a extension of the body, and we also learn to coordinate movements. Okay, so the other form, we went back to the front before we started. This one we stroke out. Press down, lift up, switch feet, poke down. Okay, turn, poke down. So once you've learned the form, try to pick up on some of the timing in the form so that the sword and the footwork and the body form and the legwork start to blend. And that helps you get through the movements a lot smoother. Set it up, unwind and wind the movements, and as you go through the form, you start to recognize the positions, the joint positions that we need to take us through the next movement. So you can see this, if you've been following it, that there is some duplication of movements that actually are similar. You see that? So the pushing of the sword and so forth. I mean, 
this compared to many of the other broadswords that are out there is pretty complicated as well. There's quite a lot of maneuvers in this form. That a lot of broadswords can seem basic compared to this. So if you can learn this sword form, your skill level would actually improve tremendously if you're doing broadsword. You see? So we're here, actually. So when we're here, we step forward. So this is like the diagonal flying. So here, Okay, so that's the form. Hopefully I didn't leave out anything because sometimes I go through the form, I just kind of run through it. And um, so you can see that a lot of times when we go through the form, you can start to see the similarities, the transitions where you're pushing the sword and you're going over the top and you come up and you come back and you do the diagonal flying movement. Then we said this is... The chicken nods its head. This movement takes a little bit of coordination. So from here, and we sit back and we we'll go one, two, three, four, five. We step up and chop. Here's your downward posture. Here's your chop. And here's your poke. We sit back and we push forward. And we're here. Chop. Here. Open, press down, step up, and we're going to the closing movements. Well, we're here. One, two, three, four, five. One. We go to the right. We switch to the left. Now, this is actually one of the unique things about the sword is we do a left side movement. And here's your stab, okay, and here's the chop down. We poke, you retreat, we're here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, Two, three, four, and then we go over, brush down, and chop. Take it to here, and end. Okay, so we see what happened there. The diagonal on this footwork, you cross over and then separate the hands. We sit back and go one, two, three, step, turn, twist, 
twist, chop down, sit down, or downward posture, step up, switch feet to chop down, stab, neutral, push the sword forward, level the sword, chop to the neck, go into this opening like a single whip, and we step up and cut up again, sit back, switch the feet, then we do it once, then we sit again, plant the sword here against the, the tricep or the upper part of your arm, and thrust out. Go to a leaning position, then we turn, or we can turn like this, and thrust. Sit back, turn to the corner, we go to the right side, heading in that corner, left side, right side, chop down, take it like this, stab. Now we turn here, horse stance, or you can actually go to this stance if you prefer. Actually, this is the way I teach it, but both is acceptable. Then you step back and you end up with the sword hanging down the vertical side. So this is protecting my spine as I go like this. So if someone were to swing a bat or swing a stick or chop towards your back, your sword ends up here and it's protecting your spine. You see where that that's where that is. Then you step one, two, three, four. Now the sword's going to go here. One, two, right? So when we turn, one, two, under the leg. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three, four, one, two, three. Switch to the left hand. Four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you know when you when you're doing movements what requires two limbs here, two limbs here. You have to integrate the movements so there's phases because we're moving through space. So it's, it sort of pulses. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then you can cycle through the movement. And then as you build your coordination, then it kind of blends together. <clears throat> it's kind of blocky, but that's one of the ways we have to learn because we have a, a skeleton structure that has to be manipulated. So when you're here, if I'm one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. How does your body know? you know, where to be when at certain times. It's part of the timing, the phase and the timing. So in martial arts and Kung Fu and Tai Chi, the, the skill level comes from the, the intricate timing that's involved in your movement. You know, all, ultimately, we start here, we end up over there. But to get from here to there, the transition, the timing in the mo movement is so critical to uh, work it together that your body has to pick up on. So can you imagine the tremendous benefit your body gains from this timing mechanism? You know, 
if we don't have this timing, the body is kind of scattered and somewhat chaotic in its way it, it's, it is. So your body needs some kind of mechanism to, to sort of dial it in to get your movements to be synchronized. This synchronization really is organization. So the organizational skill that you've developed in the human body is a tremendous thing, and it's a tremendous benefit to have this. Um, when we talk about age-related degeneration and um, you know, how do you overcome all of these things, uh, you know, from my experience and the number of years that I've been doing this, all of this has something to prevent age-related degeneration because at my age, you know, my memory is still pretty good. My coordination is um, definitely uh, much above the average person or even, you know, it's, you know, I, I would say that, you know, I have nothing to compare it to, but I would say compared to people my age, my coordination is much, much more superior. And then when it comes to balance and agility to footwork, I really don't have any issues with that because it's not something that my body has lost, mainly because I'm using it. So the, the whole idea of if you don't use it, you lose it, is, is, it's a real fact. You really will um, start to lose cognitive skills, cognitive um, uh, usage. Your body deteriorates. So that, that's not just in the physical movement. It happens internally. Your organs deteriorate, your lungs. Everything starts to go south if you don't use it. So breathing, the breathing apparatus, and we only think of the lungs as you breathe. It's actually involving a lot of muscular control, your expansion of your the thoracic area, your, your lungs, your ribs, your torso has to be involved. If your body is knotted up and it doesn't um, cooperate with your breathing, you're going to have shallow breathing. It's not going to be good. So I go through all of these different things. It's Yes, it's slow motion, and I'm not really exhausted at the end of it, but I'm, it's not... Uh, something that's an aerobic training because there's balance and movement. So I'm not hyperventilating. I can talk through this. I can go through all this. You know, that's all part of timing. If I was going through these movements and it's not coordinated somewhat with my breath because it's driven, then what ends up happening, I'll be hyperventilating. I wouldn't be able to talk to you because my body uh, is in conflict. And that conflict comes from the body tension, the body movement, all of these not syncing up. So when I speak of timing in the movement, the timing in the movement, the timing in the movement, all of the things that I'm talking about is you know, all part of that. So when you have timing and movement, then it's very natural. It, the efficiency of those movements um, really uh, come out in the long run. Uh, maybe you a lot of people, when they first pick up something, even doing Tai Chi, they're a little bit tired. They're breathing a little heavier. They're starting to perspire. Mainly why? Because you're using a little bit too much strength, using too much energy to create the movement. Is that because um, uh, the body is out of shape? Part of that is, but mainly it's because you're misusing the muscular force. So if you're doing this and you're using too much strength, or you're holding the sword too tight, or you're holding the sword too tight, these things are going to be what is going to affect your breathing. Because if you're using too much energy in the movement, what happens is that the body needs more oxygen. It needs more nutrients to create these movements. So what happens when the body gets into a better condition. It gets into a better condition from deleting excessiveness, deleting tension in the body. So all of those factors that is part of that becomes a waste of energy, right? So same thing happens if you drive your car. I use cars as an uh, analogy all the time. If you're driving down the street and you're stepping on the brake and you do that for 100 miles, you waste a lot of energy because your engine is driving you with, a, with something that's fighting it. It's your brakes. So if you put tension in your muscles, it's like putting brakes on in your movement. 
So if you're walking around with brakes on all day long, you're going to be exhausted. So if you're doing this very tight and you're very uh, forceful, you're going to be exhausted. So that's the whole premise. It's logical. It makes simple sense of why when we do Tai Chi, we don't use a lot of strength. On the other side of it, when you're young and um, you know have all kinds of vitality, you think you got to do this. And, and it's true. You know, when you're younger, you have more energy and you want to um, really be, you know, pepped up and. So you want to do things that are much more active. So this would be probably a little bit boring for someone um, that's not into this. So, you know, it's different strokes for different folks, as they would say. So when you practice something like this, don't do it with a lot of strength. Do it with focus on the movement. Where is it going? What are you using? How is that created? How is the motion created? And then how do you build the timing? That's all part of an extension of your body. When movements are magnified, what happens? The lines that are misaligned, the distortion, the body form, it all shows up. So there is, there is something to this. When I go like this, this leg is parallel to this sword. Right? When we turn, the body just spins. The control of position in the legs has to go there. So everything goes through your hips when you step, when it's in, in your leg work. Everything has to go through the hips. So because the hips are so tight with most people because of non-use, well, that non-use is because you, you don't know how to use them. So that's something that's really um, a relearning. And if you never used your hips much, then it's total learning. So you have to start somewhere. So, you know, if you get through the Tai Chi form and you have an interest, this is the next stage or the next, um, you know, progression to learn. Or if you're not interested in this, you stay with the Tai Chi paradigm, you learn the 108 movement form, and you expand your horizon on different movements, and that in itself is actually enough to cultivate. So on that note, I think we're pretty close, no? Two minutes. So if... Uh, you know, if you're working with this, you know, really revisit the videos. It is pretty complicated for someone that hasn't actually done anything. I mean, it's sort of like someone that does uh, some type of exercise and you pick up a baton and you want to twirl it and you throw it like the gymnasts do. It's not that easy to do because you don't have the dexterity, you don't, you don't have the nimbleness. So when you pick up something like this, regardless of this sword, you can actually use a stick. Um, you can also go to the toy store and get one of those fake swords, those plastic ones that kind of use something like that. You know, the Aladdin has a nice little broadsword that they use. Um, it's plastic. It's safe. You can uh, do that. But then if you're interested in getting some of this, you can go to um, Amazon. If you look up this type of a, a weapon, you could probably find it. Um, you know, students here have a lot. They buy their, their own, or actually I order it for them. But um, it's not something that I like to do is, you know, I'm not a weapon uh, supplier, but there are a lot of uh, places you can um, look for these. So anyways, um, if you like this, give us a thumbs up, uh, subscribe. We're trying to build that channel, and there's more and more people that subscribe. We have over 500 people that have subscribed, so obviously, or at least hopefully, that people will like the contract, and you're learning. The key thing is that you're learning. And if you learn, that means I'm succeeding in uh, getting the, the message across and also it's uh, slow enough. But at the same time, if you're having trouble learning it, if you give us a chat or send us an email and say, well, I'm having some trouble with this, it gives me something to focus on because right now I, I don't see anybody. So it's kind of, it is virtual, so I'm just sending this out. And if you can follow it, that's great. If you have, you're having trouble, then you have to keep watching, keep watching that video because that's the only way to capture that image because our mental image is really what gives us the mental memory and then we translate it into the body. So on that note, I'll see you next week.